Well, again, everyone, I thought it was pretty overdue for me to get back around to doing the Blu-ray news stuff here on the channel, but there wasn't as many things being announced or discussed or anything like that that had a lot of substance for me to really dig into that'd be kind of interesting in certain ways, but recently there's been a couple of titles I thought were kind of like, okay, there's some things there for me to kind of really dig into and have a little bit of a discussion about, so... First thing is John Wick Chapter 4 hitting up on June 13th from Lionsgate, getting up all the physical media releases, but mainly we're talking about the 4K stuff here because Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, that sort of things. But they're going to have 11 production featurettes, including interviews from the cast and crew, so like a lot of bonus features in that regard. So they never did really commentaries on these films. That would be, be kind of interesting for me. I'd, I would definitely list uh, Sahelsky, Keanu Reeves, talk about certain things on the commentary or maybe DP or something else like that, but regards a lot of production features, of course, of course they're going to have uh, theatrical trailers and stuff like that, but really packing this full because the thing, it was it was nice in this franchise. Each successive film performed better than the last one, the box office, and this one definitely achieved that. I think it hit, it definitely hit up more than Chapter 3 did several years ago, so crawled up there, got on top of that, so you can definitely see that step up on the production quality, the production levels, the budgets, but also the budget's not outweighing how much it earned back, so really smart filmmaking in everyone's regard, and that's coming up on June 13th. Beginning up to the boutique labels here, calling, calling on Kino Lorber, who's one of the premier ones in 4K, so they're doing phenomenal jobs on so, such great things, and one they've only announced the title on, no details, not really a release date yet, but Cujo, the Stephen King adaptation that's celebrating 40 years this year, is coming up with the new Dolby Vision Master later this year from Keen Lorber. Now, the 40th anniversary is hitting in August. It means Steve Frazier are planning to do a commentary on that film at that point in time. So, hopefully the 4K hits by then and we can have everything involved with that. They'll probably have new bonus features, stuff like that that we can dig into and discuss things when we get to the commentary. But Steve's already reread the book and we're going to get into the whole thing. So, that's a cool type of thing. And... They're also having something that has a, they allowance full details on this one. Another Stephen King adaptation they're doing for 4K is Needful Things. Sorry, Max, Max von Sydow, Ed Harris, Brian Bedelia. Interesting film because they have a brand new 4K edition of the theatrical cut, but they're also, for the first time ever, doing an HD scan of the TV version of the film that runs much longer than the theatrical cut because the problem I had watching it, I have the old crusty Blu-ray transfer of the whole thing from Keanu Lorber. And it's one of those things like, yeah, you, you tried to chop this down to make it kind of work better theatrically, not having it too long, but you didn't cut enough out of it to really make it as much of a streamlined thing. So it's like it's in this weird nebulous region between being both too short and too long. Still too long for how the thing's paced and worked out and you don't have as much substance to it to make it work for the length you have, but it's way too long for the the, the, uh, the it's, it's too long for a streamlined you want to make it, but it's too short for the thing for what it should be, considering the, the themes and everything involved with it. So I've been very much interested to get the TV version and see what that's entailed. And it was only available previously on a German Blu-ray release, so I think they had that in standard it, but this will be a brand new HD transfer on the Blu-ray, and the 4K will have the theatrical version with a new screenwriter interview from W.D. Richter, who worked on Vision by Center 78, Buckaroo Banzai, Big Trouble Little China, and also apparently worked on this as well. And there's going to be a new commentary track, or at least there is a commentary track in the whole thing, from director Frazier C. Henson and uh, moderated by Scorpion release since Walt Olson. So, good things on that. Kino Lover's really doing good jobs. They like to not just do just old legacy stuff they like to at least get tend to try to get some new stuff involved when they can when they do a 4k release so they'll try to get as many legacy things ported over but then try to get a little extra things on top of that including the new transfer so i think they're doing incredible work incredible work and one other thing they they have announced details on which was announced two years ago is that william freakins to live and die in la is finally coming to 4K. Now, like I said, 2021, they announced they were doing this, and they're just now announcing a release date and specs because William Freakin's not an easy man to work with. History has told us this, this much, and of course, with 
Him doing transfers of his films has been a very dodgy business. You go back and look at the stuff they did with French Connection. They did the initial Blu-ray release where he changed like the color timing and a bunch of things on that regard. Then they had to do a re-remastered Blu-ray release to kind of fix it back to the way everyone wanted it to be. And he's here and there and everywhere on that regard. So he's probably been very difficult to work with and get an approval on the new transfer for him. At least that's the, the rumors going around in that regard. But I can't think of any other reason why it would take him two years. And it was a... Uh, a thing going around recently that they thought they lost the license before they could get the damn thing produced. But apparently whether they whether that was the case and they just extended it or things went off in a di different direction. It is dated for July 18th with Needful Things coming out a week later on the 25th of July. So Dolby Vision Masters across the board and the whole thing. And the uh, To Live and Die in LA one, I don't know if there's anything new on the whole thing. I think that might just be legacy bonus features, but there is a lot of bonus features on the whole thing with audio commentaries, featurettes, interviews, stuff like that. William Peterson, I think, is involved in that whole thing. So it might be the same stuff he had on the Arrow and the Child Factory releases, but at least that's substantial enough if they didn't get new stuff produced and they're just grinding the entire time to get the goddamn transfer approved. That might be fine. I've never been a, The film's never really worked for me overall. I know a lot of people love it. Just never really quite clicked with me overall. I've had problems with it, but a lot of people... Really, really love the hell out of that film. And now they can enjoy it in 4K. Hopefully the transfer comes out remarkably well. But we got some things from Screen Factory where they just announced titles. No details, nothing else like that. So just dates. So it's not much really to talk about. But Upgrade, they're coming up on 4K on that thing on the 4th of July. Then the week after that, The Burning, the slasher film from, I think, 81. It's not Tom Savini effects. That and World War Z will come out on the 11th of July. And then the 25th, they're putting out the rest of the Chucky films in 4K. Bride, Seed, Cult, Curse, all that stuff. They're putting out in 4K with the bundle packs, all the big things, multiple slip covers. Get everything you want. There's no details yet on everything, anything they're including in this whole thing. In terms of the specs on the discs. But they've announced it. Hopefully in the next month, we'll have specs about interviews, stuff like that. Commentaries, anything like that like they did with the first three films where they went a little bit further on the whole thing and got some new bonus features that were not present before. So, hopefully they'll get that stuff up on that soon. But, interesting little thing here is that Universal putting out a 4K edition of Jaws 2 on the 45th anniversary, rumored to come out on the 4th of July, as you would with most Jaws films. But, this year is also the 40th anniversary of Jaws 3D. <laughs> and, uh... I don't know, I've, we, we've mentioned in our commentary for that film, I don't know if this thing would resolve well in 4K. It's a highly grainy film stock from that old analog endoglyph 3D process that just never really worked very well. And when you're doing this whole thing where they obviously shoot from two different perspectives and have this sort of over-under film exposure type of thing to get both perspectives and kind of work it out and the technology had. When you're doing just a 2D version, you're kind of getting like half the film stock frame or whatnot, half the resolutions so you're trying to get that on 4K. No, I think I think just having a Blu-ray and maybe just a digital 3D version might be enough for everyone. We'll see what happens with Jaws of Revenge. But it might just be the first two we get in 4K and nothing else. Probably people are perfectly happy with that. But there's no details. There's no Dolby Vision mark. There's no things but interviews, anything like that. We'll see what happens. we got a couple more weeks to see if anything bursts on that type of thing. Who knows, anywhere like that, but you can go check that out. And another thing coming from Universal that I'm very much endorsing is the revival version of the sequel series for Quantum Leap. It bring out season one on June 13th. Now, this thing had a, had a rocky start. The first couple episodes, I didn't like the pilot at all. I think the pilot was not good, but it gave it a couple more episodes, and the thing really found its traction with the cast, with the writing, with the product, production qualities really found their stride, they smoothed out, they really got things going. I thought it was really, really well done. I really loved the original series, and this one really put a lot of respect towards that. It was some few new twists and much more of a serialized story going through the entire season arc and whatnot, but I thought they did a really good job. I really much endorsed it. They have no bonus features announced for the Blu-ray release as of yet, but hopefully maybe they'll get some interviews, something else like that, who knows, whatever. We'll find out in due time, but on the 13th of June, they'll be coming out. I very much highly endorse that entire series. They've already got most, at least part of season two already shot 
ahead of the WGA strike and everything like that. So they at least have that to kind of jump off of when we get into the fall season and season two begins, where it's going to be a little bit more back towards, towards the original series type of format, where it's a little bit more leap by leap, episode by episode, instead of having much more of an overall arc. It's going to be a little bit more self-contained, standalone stories to a certain degree. So the teaser they put out at the end of the season finale looked really enticing, really good. I really like the series. I think the cast is fantastic. Really good stuff overall, so I highly, highly endorse it. Check it out on Peacock, or if you want to wait for the Blu-ray, definitely grab it up. I'll be grabbing it up to put again, put alongside my Mill Creek Blu-ray set of the original series. So there's that. And Paramount's putting out on the 4th of July as well. A lot of stuff coming up around that time. The Truman Show is getting its 4K debut. Now it's going to have a new restoration approved by director Peter Weir, and it looks like just the rest of it's going to be legacy bonus features. But Hopefully that comes out well. There's been a lot of fans of that type of thing coming up, and I haven't seen it since the theater, but I do remember it being a very good film. Really one of those films that was really showing Jim Carrey taking the next step out to kind of expand what he could do on screen. Not just the comedy, not just the over-the-top stuff, but being a lot more subtle actor, more dramatic actor, showing his range, what he could do, and he did very, very well in that film. Of course, another film with Ed Harris doing a marvelous job, as he always does. But I love Ed Harris. He's wonderful. He's wonderful in this film as well, but Really kind of grab that up if you're very much interested. In it. So Paramount's putting that out. Hopefully it's going to be a good transfer. Paramount's had some problems here and there. They've had some things here and there. You know, like the Saturday Night Fever, Blue 4K, the Friday the 13th one. They had some problems where it was grain management or the Dolby Vision grading, stuff like that. Not as many problems as Warner Brothers has been having. With the Rocky set, with the wonky audio stuff, and the Superman 4K collection set, which has all kinds of problems all over it, between the color grading, the audio mixing... Various other things. That's a problem. You go watch my friend Oliver Harper's breakdown of that entire set. Go check it out. He does a marvelous job just pinpointing all the things that are very much good in that set, but some things that are very much problematic. He has a rich history of knowing everything about this franchise, and I thought he was the, the perfect guy to wait to see the definitive statement about that set, so definitely check it out. Definitely endorse his stuff all day long. But, uh... One thing I was like, okay, this 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 one I had to talk about when I really announced this because I've talked about Russell Mulcahy's Razorback on this whole thing when Screen Freddy put out their Blu-ray earlier this year from the same restoration and most of the same bonus features Umbrella Entertainment did for their release. Umbrella Entertainment in Australia is now doing a 4K Ultra HD version of the whole thing. Marvelous, because this film looks amazing. You do, you do not understand how just stunningly gorgeous this film is being shot in the Australian outback, and the thing is just bursting with vibrance. So good. The 4K restoration they did several years ago they have on Blu-ray looks stunning. This thing is probably going to blow your freaking eyeballs to the back of your head. <laughs> Swear to Christ. So they're going to be putting that out on, on um, the 5th of July. The 5th. Out in Australia or whatnot. But you can probably import from a couple of sites here and there. I've done it before. And... They're going to have all the same bonus features, plus a new commentary from Michael and Peter Spierig. I'm not entirely certain who they are. I could probably involved with the film in some regard, but they didn't really detail exactly their relation to the film in that regard. But all that stuff, plus they have two separate collector's editions. One's like a standard collector's edition, then like an older collector's edition, like putting in way more stuff. So they have like three different tiers of standard edition, the collector's edition, then the big Big, big version. So they're really making this thing well. Because they know this thing has got a great cult following. The fact that they've done this work on this entire film is a great, great, great type of thing. Because before we had like a Warner Archive DD version of it, they've really gone all out, made sure they could get this thing out, looking phenomenal. I got to get around to doing a video on this film eventually, because I promised it several years ago and I never delivered. Got to revisit it at some point in time and talk about it and get into it, stuff here and there. But I thought this was like, I had to talk about this. I had to get it up on there. Visually, this film is just masterclass from Russell Mulcahy. If, you, if anything you know from his Highlander or his Shadow or something else like that, you know about him from that. This is just him going bolder, bigger, bolder. And this film predates those films, but just the, the visual scape he's got going on in this film is out of control. So definitely something to check out in that regard. And another thing from Australia, from a different company, Via Vision. 
is something I've really been kind of waiting for something to crack on for a long time now because this is involving the Prophecy franchise, first with Christopher Walken and then the two lesser related films in the franchise with Kari War. But they are putting out a five-disc Prophecy Collection Blu-ray set. This is did for August 23rd. Now they got new bonus features. They got a new interview from Red Director Gregory Wyden, who did the first film. They got new commentary tracks from, um, I think it's Film Historians. Film Historians Brian Reisman and Max Every. And they've got some legacy bonus features from the, I think they're legacy bonus features from the, the later two ones, Uprising and Forsaken. There were Kari War stuff that Walker was not involved with, and they're just kind of like scripts refresh and to be prophecy films, and like they did with all those fucking Hellraiser films at the time for Dimension Films. So, but the thing is, the first prophecy is di- is just saddled with this awful transfer. It looks like it's probably from like, like fucking Laserdisc, and they con- constantly recycle this thing on DVD and Blu-ray, and it looks terrible. It looks terrible. They had a non-anamorphic DVD release, and Echo Bridge did slightly upgrade to an anamorphic one, which is slightly better. Slightly better. Because there's more resolution for the anamorphic 16x9 frame instead of the 4x3 letterbox, but it's slightly better. Then they did it on Blu-ray, which all they did was just, like, artificially sharpen it and still looks like garbage. So I'm just waiting for something to just give us a version of this thing with a new scan that looks like actual film. Because it just... I've been wanting to do a new video on The Prophecy, at least the first film, for years now. I, I did a video a long time ago, but I don't have it available because I'm not... I, it doesn't sit well with me anymore. So I've been wanting to do something with The Prophecy, but with this old fucking terrible transfer, I don't want to fucking do it. I want to have a proper, good-looking transfer of this film to do a brand new video on because I don't want to go ahead and do a video on it with a bad transfer then, like, whatever time passes and then they get a new transfer it's like well now I just I got this good video with a bad transfer now I gotta now I can't just redo the whole thing with the, with the new thing so I want to do a video on the prophecy but not with the bad transfer and hopefully there's no details yet there's no no word about whether or not this is going to be a remaster or anything like that we just know it's going to be on five dedicated discs some new bonus features and that's all we know we don't know anything else at this point in time so hopefully between now and August We'll le- leverage some information out of them and find out if there is a new transfer one way or another and we don't have to wait for the release date. We get some reviews out and get some reactions and find out one way or another. So hopefully something will be released and notified to everyone in due time because it really, really is really is a really gorgeous film, that first film. Cinematography is really good. I've always praised the cinematography, but the transfer does not do it justice whatsoever. It looks really bad. Really bad. And so... Hopefully, because even the U.S., when they put it on Blu-ray, they like would cram like three or four films on one Blu-ray disc. Probably the bitrate would suffer and stuff like that. So at least they're putting in the effort to grant five dedicated discs for each one of the films. You're going to have a lenticular slipcover. Putting in some effort on this whole thing. So hopefully it's not just bonus features and casing. Hopefully they'll at least get a new transfer. That's probably... Be, and they are licensing it directly from Paramount and Miramax. It's on the actual packaging and the printed discs. They have those logos on there. So hopefully something's happening in that regard. And someone said, hey, this transfer looks terrible. Can we do something about it? Can we get a new scan? Something else like that. Hopefully someone did something and moved that needle somewhere on that regard to make sure that we get a good transfer of the first film. The other ones look fine. Two and three look perfectly fine. And, of course, probably the, the Curry War ones probably look decent or whatnot on Blu-ray. They all at least look like decent HD transfers. I think the second one might have gotten like a slight upgrade or whatnot when it went to HD, but here, there, and everywhere, they've... The, re- the sequels all look okay. The first one just looks like trash, and it needs to get a re- re- refresh. So, let me let me know, guys, what you feel about these different releases coming up in due time. Stuff that's going on your wish list, pre-orders, something else like that, or what you're kind of hoping for. The ones that are just tells and downs and no details yet, what you're hoping they get on some of these things, like the Chucky stuff, they get certain interviews or something else like that. Let me know, guys, because I'm, I'm sure those... Old DDs probably at least had some things here and there to talk about, so they'll probably pour all that stuff over. Let's see if they get anything new on that regard. But, of course, guys, let me know what your thoughts down below. Also, likes, subscribes, shares around social media help extremely well on this entire channel. Helps to feed the algorithm, lets things expand here and there, get things out further. And, of course, also the Super Things feature on the entire... Every single video here on the channel has a Super Things feature. You can contribute any money you want. Anything you find especially entertaining or informative or anything like that. And of course, Patreon's always there if you want to support the channel in that regard. 
It's an early access to various things on the channel and all that type of stuff. So guys, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.